Hello everybody and welcome back to this tutorial and right now we're going to enter a section of Python 3 programming that is going to be object oriented programming. Now basically this can be considered a little bit intermediate to advanced part of the Python 3 syntax or not just some syntax basically this is uh, introducing ourselves to a whole different type of programming in Python 3 such as using classes, using subclasses, introducing to function overloading data member, class variable, and so on and so on. We're going to take a look at all of that right now. Those are just some basic uh, object-oriented programming terminology that we're also going to cover in this lecture right now. And then you will actually be able to call yourself an actual beginner or to intermediate Python 3 programmer if you know all of this as well as the previous lectures then you can actually consider yourself a beginner Python 3 programmer. So, first of all, Python has been an object-oriented programming language since the actual time it existed. If you do not really have any previous experience with object-oriented programming, you may want to actually learn more about it, and then you will be able to understand this on a whole another level, because in the beginning it can actually be a little bit of overwhelming, and you might actually consider it a little bit hard, even though it really isn't that hard. Now, Python 3 object-oriented programming programming is one of the easiest ones, so this is a good way to start learning object-oriented programming, as it will give you an actual beginning knowledge if you actually try to learn a different programming language later on. So let us open up our idle right here. Let's open a new file, and basically let us introduce ourselves with some of the basic terminology that you will encounter while learning the object-oriented programming. So the first thing that you will encounter, of course, is going to be a class. Now basically a class is a user-defined prototype for an object that defines a set of attributes that characterize any object of the class. Now basically that means that the class has data members, variables and instance variables and also it can have methods or if you want to call them functions. Now what methods are are basically functions that are a part of a certain class. So we already know what functions are, we saw how we can call them before, now imagine that in inside a certain class you create a function, that function will be actually called a method. Now the next thing that is going to be in the actual class is going to be a class variable and that is the variable that is shared by all instances of a class. Now class variables are defined within a class but outside of any class methods. Class variables are not used as frequently as instance variables are. Okay, so basically what you need to remember from all of this is that class variable are going to be most likely coded at the beginning of the class outside of any specific method that is going to perform some part of the code. Okay, now uh, as I said before, a method that is a special kind of function that is defined in the class definition itself. Uh, an instance is an individual object of a certain class. What that means is basically an object that belongs to a class circle. For example, it is an instance of the class that we will call circle. Now, inheritance is the transfer of the characteristics of a class to other classes that are derived from it. So you can have a class that is going to come from a different or a whole different class that is going to inherit all of its objects, okay? Data member is, as we said, a class variable or instance variable that holds data associated with the class and its objects. And the object is a unique instance of the data structure that is defined by its class. So those are some of the uh, object-oriented terminology. Now, of course, uh, it might sound a little bit uh, harsh, but it really isn't. You will see it just in a few seconds. So let us start off by showing you how to create a simple class. Okay, so creating classes, we're going to use our... Let's just close this right here. Do you want to save? No, I don't want to save anything. Uh, let's see how we can actually create a class in Python 3. So the class statement creates a new class definition. So basically just type in here class will create a class that is going to be named as the part that comes after the class definition. So class and then name underscore of underscore class. You can name it just like that, even though that is not really such a good name. You can call it class name. 
simply as that. And then you specify two dots and all the code that is going to be below it is going to belong to the actual class itself. So the name of the class basically immediately follows the keyword class followed by a column as below. So uh, the class has a documentation string which can be accessed via class name dot doc or underscore underscore doc underscore underscore and the class should consists of all the actual component statements defining class members data attributes and functions so let's take a look at a real example of creating a class so you will understand this a whole better so first of all what we're going to do is we're going to create a class which is going to be a class employee okay Simply as that, this class is going to be everything defined about our employees in, for example, our already existing company. So right here, we can have a variable that is going to count the amount of employees. So for example, EMP count, which stands for employee count, will be set to zero at the beginning. Oops, I pressed enter too early. So employee, EMP equals zero right here then we will have an actual init function and what the init function or method is is basically let me first of all type it right here so we will define it just like this so underscore underscore init and then underscore underscore and this init function or method is a special method which is called class constructor or initialization method that python calls when you create a new instance of this class and what this method will take is basically all the variables that are going to be a part of our employees. And you will see just in a second, these actual functions will always take a self argument. And basically uh, what a self argument is, uh, well, you declare other class methods like normal functions, but with the exception that the first argument right here to each method will be self. Now Python adds the self argument to the list for you, so you do not need to include it when you call the methods, okay? That's why we include the self part right here. And let's say that the actual variables or the actual things that our employees will have is their name, let's say their email address, their salary, and for example, age. Or let's instead of salary use age, okay? Simply as that. These are going to be three different values that each employee will have. Then we will define them right here. So of course, right now we will have to define it once again with the self prefix before. So self name equals name. Self email equals email. And then self age equals age, okay? And as soon as this function right here in it is called or this method right here, we will know that this class has been employed, uh, pardon me, this class has been actually used on a certain uh, employee and therefore we can increase the employee count by one. And in order to increase the employee count, we can simply just type here employee dot and call the actual EMP right here which actually I should have called EMP count, but doesn't matter. We can simply just specify it like here, EMP plus equals one. And we know that this plus equals statement right here basically just increases the variable by one. Okay, so this is our init function. And this is a function that will always be in a class. So right now I should have actually, yeah, let us actually go right here since it is a little bit hard to code it in the actual uh, interpreter. So we'll just copy it from here and I will just paste everything we coded to the actual Python program. And right here I will also add EMP count so we don't actually confuse it with an EMP. And right here we will add EMP count plus equals one. Okay, so that is our first method to our class. Right now, let us create an actual method that is going to take self argument because it belongs to our class and it is going to print the total employee number. Okay, so def display count, it takes self as argument and it will basically just print total employee number is 
and then we can add a string of employee or pardon me em, uh, employee dot emp count okay so employee dot emp count open and close two brackets right here and the third function is going to be the function that will actually display the information about a specific employee. So def display information, it will take self as the argument. And right here, we will simply just print name will be equal to basically self.name. Then right here, we can have uh, email is going to be equal to self.email. And then the last thing is the age. So age is going to be equal to self.age. Let me just enlarge this so we can see the entire code properly. Just like this, okay. Uh, press here enter and this is basically our entire function. Okay, so simple as that. Now the variable emp count, let us also uh, remind ourselves, is a class variable whose value is shared among all instances of this class right here. So it can be shared between all of these right here. Uh, also, this can be accessed as employee.emp count from inside the class or outside the class, however you want it. Now you can see right here, we use employee.emp count. It can be used inside the class as we saw the example right here. And soon enough, we're going to take a look at the example of using it outside the class as well. Let's also uh, remind ourselves that this init method right here is a special method and it is a constructor initialization method that, or initialization method that, will, that Python will call once you create the new instance of this class. So as I said before, this will get called every time we actually put a person into this class employee, which shouldn't be employee, it, has, it is missing an O. Okay, so class employee. And that's why we actually increase the counter of employees in this class or method right here, okay? All right, so right now that we have the actual class, we need to take a look at how we can actually create the instances, the instances of a class or how we can actually add a person to this employee class. So this is rather simple. Now that we have a class right here, in order to add an actual employee, we can simply just type here employee one is going to be equal. And then in order to add it to the actual class, you simply just type here the class name and in between the brackets, you specify all the needed arguments. And in our case, the needed arguments are name, email, and age. So these are the three arguments that we need to specify for every employee that we put in this class. So let us just type here, uh, Adam, not this, we need Adam, then comma, then the next thing we specify is the email. So we can just type here Adam at gmail.com. And then the last thing will be the age. And let's say the Adam's age is, for example, uh, 15. So it doesn't even matter. That is the age of Adam. And right now we have successfully created the instance the, of this employee class. So you will notice if we just save this, go to my Python programs, employee.py. And if you just simply run it right here, inconsistent use of tabs and spaces in the indentation, okay. Let me just see what do you mean by that. Maybe this was the problem, not really sure. Let's save it. Nope, it says inconsistent use of tabs. So let's try it right here.
let me just try to actually find where the actual indentation is not specified correctly. This is good, this is good. Okay, maybe now. Let's try to run it once again. Syntax error, inconsistent use of tabs. Where is the actual inconsistent use of tabs? I'm not really quite sure. Maybe right here. Okay, now this is actually presenting us a problem. So what I will do is I will simply just copy this, paste it right here. And we actually get the same error as well here, which is a little bit weird. So let us actually try each line to see whether it is indented properly. This one is, this one is. Okay, I think it is this one. Not really sure why it doesn't it want to tab itself. Yeah, okay, so I will just code it real quick right in the idle because for some reason this is presenting us a problem. So let's just code it real quick right here. Not really sure where the actual error is, but doesn't even matter. Class employee, I will just retype it all real quick. EMP count equals zero. Def underscore init underscore takes four arguments, self argument, name argument, email, and the age argument, okay? Then self dot name is going to be equal to name, self dot email is going to be equal to email, self dot age is going to be equal to age. Now this indentation is a lot simpler on Linux because you don't, you actually can't see where the indentation is and right here I have no idea what the error is. Def display count self print total employee number is and then here we will add a string of employee EMP count and here we have the last function which is going to be display information take self argument because it belongs to this class and it will simply just print name self.name email self.email H is the last one and self dot age. Okay. So everything worked correctly right here. And right now let us create our employee once again. So employee one equals to the employee class. And here we will specify the name Adam. Once again, Adam at gmail.com and 15 years old. And right now we successfully created the instance or the Adam, we actually put him into the actual class employee. So right now uh, we have one instances of this class and in order to get the information for Adam and the information for the actual full amount of employees in this class, we can simply display these two functions. And in order to do that, we can simply just call them. So uh, in order to call them, you can simply just type here employee one dot display information and here you will see that it will display information for Adam as you can see name Adam email Adam 
at gmail.com and age 15. Okay, so simple as that. Let me just check this out right here. Oops, it's not the actual uh, employee one. And we can see that if you just use the display count method right here, you will get printed out the total number of employees is one. Now, in order to actually create a second employee or add the second instances of the actual class, you can simply just use employee to equals and then basically use the employee function to add another person. So for example, Jack, email jack at gmail.com and age 20. And then if you simply just use the same function or the same method from the actual classes before, which is the display count, you will see that right now the total employee number is two. Okay. And then you can, of course, if you want to uh, print the jack information as well. So display information, information, open and close brackets, and you will see everything for Jack. Okay, so basically this would be the introductory part for our classes. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I hope I see you in the next one. Bye!